As I make this video, the Dow Jones is up nearly 500 points as the United States and China have come to a partial deal. So is it sunshine and rainbows from here on out, or is this the calm before the storm? It's Friday, October 11, 2019. U.S. and China reach partial trade deal. This could set up a trade truce. Now, as most of you remember, the president said he would not accept a partial deal. It was uh, a complete whole deal or nothing. We have a partial deal right now. And, and let me tell you, this deal isn't going to help you. It isn't going to help me who it will help is the stock market. Your day-to-day -day life is not going to change. In fact, most of, your, most of you people out there, your day-to-day -day life didn't even change while we were going through these negotiations over the last 22 months. Who it really affected and what it really affected was the stock market, corporations, um, and, and, and some of the farmers. Um, and maybe this will be good news uh, for some of the farmers, um, but... Uh, as a whole, your life isn't going to change. My life isn't going to change. Wall Street, though, is. The algorithms love it. Uh, Dow Jones up nearly 500 points. Stock market going crazy. Um, but again, what really is going to change here? It says here on Zero Hedge uh, in this article, China would agree to some agricultural concessions and the U.S. would provide some tariff relief. Now, um, of course, we're coming into the holidays and uh, we've got to keep this economy going. So are we really dedicated uh, to standing up to China at this point? I don't know. Remember, I support this president 100 percent. But is he really standing up to China? Are we really in a trade war or are we folding like the NBA? The pact is tentative and subject to change. And what I see from today, this is a big nothing burger. I don't see anything uh, uh, big. Um, so where are we 22 months later in these negotiations? We basically are going to sell them some soybeans um, and uh, the U.S. will provide some tariff relief or maybe not raise tariffs uh, any further. But it's enough news to pull, push the Dow Jones um, up around 500 points at the moment. And it's just good news uh, as a whole for the stock market. But again, your life really isn't going to change um, over any of this. But as China continues to dominate the world and as they seem to be dominating America, your life is going to change. Um, as China, the communist regime, um, wraps its tentacles around America even more as we see now in Hollywood, uh, in the NBA, um, and in the economy here in America. No matter what happens with these negotiations with China or what doesn't happen, one thing is certain, a recession is coming to America. I truly believe that recession has already begun. Here's another warning sign. Treasury yield curve uninverts seals fate of imminent recession this is on zero hedge today u.s treasury yield curve has ominously uninverted many people think that would be a good sign uh, but it's not necessarily a good sign because we know what follows afterward uh, people think right now we're out of the world out of the woods uh, because the yield curve has steepened the inversion was a warning that a recession is coming. But once it starts to steepen out from the inversion, at this point, the Fed has realized it's behind the curve. The market knows knows it too. And everybody knows the Fed is going to be slashing interest rates. And these markets know that the Fed is going to be slashing interest rates. Look, we're seeing, we're seeing more quantitative easing taking place. We're seeing uh, what's happening with this liquidity crisis and these injections of massive amounts of cash. These markets know that the Fed is going to do everything it needs to do to continue to prop up the stock market, continue to keep this economy chugging along. It feels like this is an insurance policy. They feel, the, the markets feel like they're bulletproof. 
but I guarantee you this is not going to last. Wall Street Journal this morning, New York Fed adds $82.7 billion to financial system in latest repo transaction. Repeat, $82.7 billion injected today on Friday, October 11th, uh, to relieve funding pressure in money markets. And yet Dow Jones is up at around 500 points right now. The average American citizen, the average comatose, dumbed down American thinks everything is okay. And now uh, we have this, this nothing burger uh, of positive news that um, there's been a truce with the uh, China trade war. And so everything's going to be okay now. The algorithms have set off. Everything is, is fine. Although we have massive debt, we have a liquidity crisis continuing. Uh, this was only going to last, what, what, a couple weeks? And uh, now we're going to November 4th, and you can probably expect it's going to go beyond that. Um, these banks are in trouble. Uh, there is a liquidity crisis and a bailout taking place right now. You're witnessing quantitative easing. If things were so good, how come we are bailing out banks right now? How come we are um, using quantitative easing again? How come, if things are so good, we're going to be getting another rate cut uh, this October? Um, and if things were so good, we probably wouldn't uh, be accepting a partial deal with China today. So while everybody's clapping about the truce today, while people live in their little bubbles and believe everything's going to be okay, let me go over a few things with you. Permanent Open Market Operations, P-O-M-O. -O. Fed will purchase Treasury bills at, at least into the second quarter of next year to maintain ample reserves. Fed will make monthly purchases of about $60 billion for four months. Overnight repo operations will be conducted daily, initially in an offering amount of $75 billion per operation. Term repo operations will be conducted twice a week in the amount of $35 billion per operation. So $60 billion um, in the permanent open market operations plus $75 billion in the overnight repo market plus $35 billion twice a week uh, for the term repo market. And yet there's people out there that think everything's okay. This isn't normal. Over Midwest farms face imminent all out blizzard. Um, they're about to get hit um, it, over there in the Midwest by the worst blizzard they've ever seen for an October. Millions of acres did not get planted. Tens of millions of acres were delayed with their planting. So um, only 22% of North Dakota corn is mature. In South Dakota, only 36% of corn is mature. In Minnesota, only 39% of corn is mature. Now uh, we have a historic storm heading their direction. Uh, this could absolutely devastate these farmers in North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, and maybe some of the outlying states. Uh, the perfect storm is now coming to America. Look, we have so much economic uncertainty, massive political uncertainty, social uncertainty, and now um, uncertainty uh, with possible food shortages coming to America. Uh, I mean, just think, and, and, and on top of that, we have massive fires taking place here in Northern California, uh, around 2 million people now without power. I'm getting messages down here in Palm Springs, Southern California, saying that I could po quite possibly get my power shut off. They're telling people their power could be shut off for up to six days. If you're 90 years old, um, if you need uh, your pharmaceuticals, uh, if you have food in the refrigerator, what, you know, you know, what are these people going to do? PG&E, um, as you know, last year with the massive fire out here, you know, people uh, killed, you know, uh, thousands of homes burned to the ground, uh, cutting power. Um, and as we're getting power cuts here in California, because of the winds and the fires up in Northern California, there's another crisis taking place and it's called gasoline. I'm paying around $4 a gallon for regular gas right now. Los Angeles County, re regular average price of regular gas is $4.25 and many stations are charging 
over five dollars a gallon for regular gas. Um, I saw I saw super unleaded in LA at five dollars and forty nine cents. Just think of the power that they have. They can flip a switch and cut your power right off in, in the blink of an eye. Uh, it doesn't have to be a tornado or an earthquake. We have fires up in Northern California and we have winds. So they're saying because of winds as a preventative measure, uh, we wanna cut your power off so it doesn't start a fire. But um, just think of the excuses they could use to say, we're gonna cut your power off. And so just think if you didn't have power on at your house for six days or 10 days or two weeks, how would you eat? Local restaurants are shut down. Um, you know, you have uh, your medicines in your refrigerator, your food, water. Um, you, you know, it, it's just shocking to think how unprepared we are as human beings, how much trust we put in the government when it might be the government that actually flips the switch and shuts you off. Everybody's on smart meters. You know, here where I live, it can quite easily get between 115 and 120 degrees in the summer. Um, there's no way most people could survive here in Palm Springs uh, on a 118 degree day in July without their air conditioning. It would be disastrous for so many people, uh, especially the elderly or very young. So um, it doesn't take a natural disaster to have your power cut off. Uh, it could be a man-made one. All they need is an excuse to shut you down. People with solar panels believing that uh, they're going to be okay your solar panels go right to the grid not right to your house so they're useless so you're getting no energy so people with solar panels who who thought that you know they they would be okay if if the power went out uh found out quite quickly that that power doesn't go right to them it goes to the grid first and then back to them but with power down um they're not getting any power um, if you're driving a tesla um, and you're up in Northern California and you're one of the uh, 2 million people without power, you can't drive your car. So we really got to think about situations, uh, scenarios that can take place that are absolutely out of our control and why you must have preparations. Food and water. Again, another example of what's happening right here in California, why you should have water and food put away. What if this started affecting cities? Uh, you couldn't get to your ATM. You couldn't get to your bank. The power's out. Grocery store doesn't have food now. Uh, the the um, uh, water district, uh, the water plants can't pump water because the power's down. What would you do? Ask the two million people up in Northern California what they're doing today. I hope most of them put food and water away. So I'm sure later today we will be inundated with propaganda from the media telling us uh, how great this truce is, um, how bright the future is with China. China is our neighbor and our friend, and the future is going to be positive. Um, but remember, you don't have a $17 trillion negative yielding sovereign debt if there is economic and fiscal responsibility. There is, no matter what they tell you about China, China doesn't even matter. We have, we have massive debt right here in America. We are witnessing a global slowdown. Massive global debt, 250 trillion plus dollars of debt globally. And yet we're, we're, there's been so much emphasis put on with these negotiations while wow, America keeps acquiring massive amounts of debt. You know, China is an adversary, no doubt, but the real danger, the real adversary to America is this massive amount of debt. Trillions of dollars and low rates have created short-term prosperity. People are still drunk on the Kool-Aid. Private wealth is increasing at the expense of public wealth. Private wealth is now concentrated in the top 1%, while 70% of the U.S. GDP is dependent on consumer spending. 90% have been working for stagnant wages for decades, right along with diminishing GDP growth. Corporations, as a majority, are strapped financially, yet we're being told this economy is great, we're gonna be hit up with all this propaganda with China that everything's gonna be okay. It isn't okay. Massive debt. We have massive uh, record, historical uh, household debt, corporate debt, government debt, local uh, municipality debt, debt, you name it. Debt is absolutely going bananas here in America, and it is going to create massive 
problems that at some point are not going to be avoided. Many corporate executives have made profit allocate, allocations decisions to pay themselves and the stockholders very well at the expense of workers, communities, and the economy. Look, it doesn't matter what happens with China. What you better worry about is what's happening right here to your own economy with what's happening with your own debt. And this is why it's so imperative that you get yourself out of debt, why it's so important to be your own central bank, why it's so important to have your own preps, your own food, your own water, and your own security. Ask the two million people here in Northern California. Many corporations are paying out more cash than they're taking in. A cash flow crunch at a negative 15% rate, they're burning cash at an alarming rate to maintain stock buybacks and dividend levels. Corporate debt has ballooned to 46% of GDP. And that's uh, the 2018 number, so it's even greater now. When recession hits, corporate sales fall, cash flow goes negative, high debt payments become hard to make, employees are laid off, uh, management tries to just hold on. Whatever money a corporation has, it's going to use just to stay open and keep the lights on. And, um, you know, we're starting to see more layoffs and we're starting to see other problems like pension cuts. What's a recession look like? Well, corporations lay off workers and pull back on spending. Uh, they're stuck paying huge debts instead of investing. We're already starting to see some of that. Uh, we're going to see uh, federal government spending cuts. With falling corporate revenues and individuals, government cuts discretionary spending such as social services and transfer funding programs. Consumers will pull back on their spending. Um, they're going to be forced, the consumer is going to be forced to tighten up on their budgets, pay off expensive car loans and student loan debt. And many of them will not have a job to do this. So what's going to happen to them? They're going to drown in debt. This is why I just reinforce the message to be paying off your debts now. This recession is coming and I fear it is going to be a massive depression. Um, you will see world trade declines. Pension payments uh, will be in jeopardy uh, as they are already beginning to be. Workers dependent on corporate and public pensions may see their benefits cut from pensions that are poorly funded today, which is about at least 70% of them. Investment environment uncertainty. Uncertainty will be extremely high. Uh, Fed will implement low rates and quantitative easing. We're already seeing this. Um, we're already heading there right now and we're technically not even in a recession. Ask yourself how bad it will be when we are officially in recession. People will be more worried about the return of capital, not the return on capital. Remember, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Today, uh, the metals, silver did okay. The metals got hit a little bit. Uh, I thought they would take a harder hit than they did, but they're on sale. They continue to be on sale. And if you don't have precious metals, today is a great day to go out and purchase some precious metals. If you don't have food and water, it's a great day to, to go uh, purchase food and water. If you don't have security, you don't have brass, today is a great day to go get them. It's another opportunity to be preparing. And many people want to accelerate and believe that, you know, uh, this should happen now. This collapse should have already happened. Um, you've been talking about this for two years, blah, blah, blah. And I must repeat this. This is going to be the biggest wealth transfer the world has seen. This is going to be the Great Depression 2.0. These things just don't develop over three or four or five or six years. They take a while. And what they're doing is they're sucking people right back into the real estate markets uh, today, people are going to be absolutely exuberant about what they're seeing in the stock market. People are going to get sucked right back into the stock market because it's doing so well today. But the whole thing is propped up on an illusion. And 97% 
of the sheep, of the dumbed down, of the masses, the herd, don't understand that. They will be led to slaughter. Um, people are going to get complacent because, again, the media is going to just hit you with this propaganda today that, um, you know, the trade negotiations are, are heading positive. China's our friend. They want to do a deal. Um, and so everything now um, is on the hinges of China and the U.S., but they don't want to talk about the massive debt. They don't want to talk about the real problems that are going to affect America. No matter what kind of trade deal we get with China, it's not going to take away the debt. It's not going to take away that we're not manufacturing anything here. It's not going to take away the fact that America and America's economy is based on consumption and credit and debt. And this is unsustainable. Massive debt and consumption is not going to sustain America, America's future, America's economy. Don't follow the herd. They're going to lose. These people, again, will be duped in to the real estate markets, to the stock markets, um, and they're going to lose. And I'm not saying it's going to happen next week or next month or next year. And I'm not saying it can't happen next week, next month or next year. It can happen at any time. And it will happen when it happens. You don't know about a black swan that flies into this picture and changes everything. You don't know if some event occurs or some other country uh, uh, financially goes down or Deutsche Bank goes down. You have no control of what is going to happen. But what you do have control is of right now, what you do have control of right now is today and what you are doing today. Are you preparing today? Or are you just going to believe the hype are you going to live the illusion? Are you going to continue to live in the bubble? Are you going to continue to believe the media, the banks, all the financial institutions? Are you going to believe that these markets are controlled and manipulated? If you truly believe everything is okay, even though we don't make anything in America, we just consume and we live on credit cards and we live on debt. And America is at $22.7 trillion of debt. 7 million people plus now haven't made an auto payment in 90 days. Um, Household debt, all-time highs, corporate debt, all-time highs, U.S. debt, all-time highs. You look at states like Illinois, New Jersey, absolutely bankrupt. If you believe everything's okay, you go ahead and invest in these markets. You put your belief in paper. You, do, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to bet against the debt. I am 100% into hard assets, stacking cash, living conservative, walking close to God and making sure all my preps are topped off. And every day that nothing bad happens is another day that I'm gonna to continue to hedge my bet and be more prepared to survive and to succeed and prosper when the bad times come. I can't promise you when that's gonna happen, but I can promise you this, it will happen. So I'm gonna wrap it up right here. Before I go, make sure you're not living your life in fear and negativity. Yes, there are massive concerns here in America. Yes, there is massive uncertainties, political, social, economic uncertainties. Should you be concerned? Absolutely, 100%. But if you're an awake individual, um, if you're a prepared individual, don't live your life in fear. Don't live your life in negativity. You know, a lot of people uh, say that I'm a negative person based on my videos. Um, so they, they judge me and say I'm negative because the message from my videos. Quite the contrary. I'm a very positive person, but I'm giving you a message based on reality, based on truth, based on the facts, based on what's happening daily. Um, the reality is it's not always, you know, blue skies, puffy, white clouds, rainbows, and teddy bears. There's a hurricane coming. And I'm telling you to get the plywood and the nails ready to cover up your windows because damage is coming. And that's just reality. But until that hurricane gets here, that doesn't mean that you can't have some balance in your life. I believe it's healthy to take a step back, take a breath, and enjoy what God has given you. To enjoy your friends, your family, and the beautiful creations around you. It is healthy to have 
balance. You know, it's like going to the gym. You don't need to go to the gym seven days a week, three hours a day. It's okay to take a day or two off and rest and have balance. Give your body that break. Have that mental break. Have a, you know, have a cheat meal. You know, eat, eat something that you maybe shouldn't. You're allowed to do that reward yourself. And right now, as we're preparing, it's very important that you reward yourself. It's important to have that mental break, that physical break, step back and enjoy things. It's okay. We cannot just, you know, allow all this negativity and all this bad news to um, run our lives, to control our lives. We're preparing for it. The people who are unprepared, the people who aren't getting ready, the people who are asleep, these are the people who are going to to have negativity in their lives. These are gonna be the people who are going to have fear in their lives Um, because when this collapse does happen, these unprepared people are going to have to deal with the reality of the repercussions that come with a collapse. The repercussions that happen socially, the repercussions that happen economically, when you don't have money, when you only have debt, you're going to have a hard time surviving. When you're not prepared with security and preps, um, the streets can be a very, very bad place when people are hungry, when they're angry, when they've lost their pensions, when they don't have water, when their kids are starving. And the people who are the most unprepared are going to be the ones that are going to have to deal with a lot of this. Not to say that we're not, but we'll be prepared to deal with situations that the average American did not prepare for. So I just want to close with that. Make sure you're having some fun. Make sure you thank God every day for everything you have, because we still have a very great life. If we're you know sitting here watching this video, if we're breathing today, uh, if we had lunch, you have a pretty good life. If you're watching this on your $1,200 iPhone or a computer, you have a better life than most people. You probably don't even realize that, but you have a much better life than most people in the world. And you should thank God every day for that. But also take this day and take every day as an opportunity to make yourself a better person, to make yourself harder to kill, to make yourself a survivor. Food, water, security, gold, silver, trauma kit, gear, clothes, medication. Now is the time to be preparing. Look, let's hope nothing happens. And if it doesn't, great. But if it does, you'll be glad you watched this video. God bless every one of you. Have a phenomenal weekend. Thanks for watching. We'll talk very, very soon.